Hey everybody, Jen at Jekyll Bates. I have been getting a lot of questions lately about crawl patterns. Now, I have done a crawl pattern video before on the wiper plopper, but uh, a couple of folks, actually a few folks, have asked to have it done on a smaller bait. So today, I'm going to try and knock out two birds with one stone. Um, I've also gotten questions as to how you would go about doing more than one bait at a time. So we have a dual purpose for today. Number one, I'm going to teach you guys how I do a crawl pattern. And there's a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, I'm just going to tell you how I do it and hopefully it'll be uh, a little bit more effective for you guys and it'll take away some of the mystery about lining up your, your crawl lines on the sides of the bait. Um, the second is doing more than one in a run. Um, after a while it becomes second nature to you and it's pretty easy to do as long as you follow the same simple steps. So we're going to get started. I've got two uh, 0.5 baits today. These are square bills. I've got four of them lined up in a row. And I also have hand cut stencils. I, I hand cut these myself. Um, some people use cry cut, some people use the vacuum seal, some people are even gifted and, and awesomely talented enough to use the, um, the 3D printers. I go through a lot of hooks. I mean, a lot of hooks. So one of the things that hook boxes have are these little thin cardboard backings. So they make perfect stencil pattern uh, templates. Searching for the word, but that's what it is. It's, it's a template. And I've used this over and over again. Um, when you have uh, specific patterns on a website, it, it, it does help to keep the same templates. Or at least when you update it, make sure you update the pictures on your pages. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to load the uh, Iwata Eclipse airbrush with some opaque black. And I like to use opaque more than transparent because it has less of a tendency to run. I can still shoot it fairly fine through this in detail work. And we're going to pull the pressure way down. So I've just cleared it and cleaned it out. So we've got a very clean, ready to go airbrush. I'm going to pull this down to between 5 and 10 psi. We're going to load a little bit in the top. These are gravity fed. Unless you're doing stuff like auto detailing and, and stuff at a real high capacity, usually you don't need those uh, airbrushes that have the bottle feeds from the bottom. I do have a couple of those. I don't ever use them. I don't even know why I have them. Uh, I keep a couple backups for stenciling and detail. Um, but again, I, I'm usually able to do pretty much everything I need to do on basic patterns with one airbrush. And that's what we're going to concentrate on today. The first part that we're going to put on this crawfish is the collar. And what you're going to see is almost looks like the letter C. And it's got a little divot right here at the very top. And we're going to add that to all four of our baits first. Now, we're not going to do all of these because that's a lot of um, shell pieces. Just going to do one or two to make it look believable. Same thing. They have a lot of, of shell pieces in the back. But for, unless you're doing a jerk bait, um, you can pretty much keep it simple with just one or two. So we've got our airbrush loaded. We've got our pressure down. You want to try and do as much as you can right here. You want to aim your airbrush at this and not onto the bait itself because you really just want that shading and it's going to blend. So you want to try and hit the airbrush onto the template more than you are onto the bait. It should just be a little bit of residual that's coming off. down just a little bit more. You really don't want to blow it. You don't want this to blow and over atomize. 
And we're just going to come right along the edge of this template. And there you see you've got that collar. And we've got the next step is going to be staying with the back. And the reason we do that is so once you have all of the outlines and your stencil work done on the backs, it's going to be much easier to line up the sides. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about here. Let's start with this first one. I'm going to stay on the same. You see I keep a paper towel tape down and that's just so I can wipe stencils off as I go. It's just a little quick tip. You'll notice I'm kind of overlapping. I'm going a little bit further than just on the back of this bait. And that's for the reasons that I was talking about earlier. So now we see we've got these two lines and they're going to direct us on how we're going to lay the side parts of the crawl pattern. Now as we're doing this, and we're doing more than one, so I'm going to lay these out like this. And so that we're working on the same side on all four baits, I'm going to flip this side over. So we're going to start on the left side of the square bill. You can only do one at a time. So I'm going to bring this at an angle. Now, I don't know if you can see this, but from my viewpoint, I can see where I've lined up the back. And I've overshot it, like I said. So when we lay in our next piece of stencil, we want this long piece here. And we're going to come in at an angle going towards the face. From the tail to the face, we're going to angle it just like this. So you have a line that looks just like that. And I'm just matching up where it left off and continuing down. That's all I'm doing. It takes a little bit of practice. And then I'm going to use a curved piece. Kind of get that eye. Okay. Now because I'm working on this side of the bait, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to finish one bait at a time because it's going to be much easier than trying to switch out at this point. The, the basic thing that you want to do, just to revisit, is when you're starting, start with the top or the back of the bait. Do the collar and then do your, um, do the top of the back. And you just need like two or three. You can probably get away with three um, actual crawl shell pieces but I, I'm only going to do two on this one. So now that we've done this right there, you can see that this represents a shell piece and I've kind of cut some little notches out to make it look a little bit more believable. And you can see that I've done this before on, on a square bill. This is my square bill and it will work on other, like it works on the S-crank and things like that, but I, I made it specifically for a square bill. So we're just going to line this up. Okay, and now you can see that we've got our first shell outline. I'm going to come back and do the same. You always want to work away from you so that you're not, if you do this and then you come back here, you run the risk of smudging the paint because it's still a little bit wet. Okay, and you always want to get this back piece want to run one more little line just like that. So now when you look at it, I'm going to take it off for you guys so you can see. We now have the collar, our back, which is always going to be first because that helps you line up your sides, and then a straight line and a straight line, and then come back. The biggest key to this is learning pressure on your trigger. If you guys are new to airbrushing, 
and you're not familiar with how much pressure and how much pain is going to come out of your gun at, at a specific time, let me show you a trick. This is something that you can do every day, especially if you're not used to this trigger. Um, some, of the, some of your basic airbrushes have an actual squeeze trigger. This is, this is where it's at because this is, you, you can feel the air coming out just like that. And you can hear it. Nothing's coming out. And that's because you actually have to pull this trigger back towards you in order to get anything atomized to shoot out of your gun. So when you press down, just ease your finger back until you get something coming out. And you can even practice, if you get real close on this, you can make star patterns. And that's going to give you a real good indication. Let's see, I'm just... Just practice that. Practice it while you don't have anything to do. That'll give you an indication of how fast you're... And you can see when the pressure is low, it's a lot different than when I crank my pressure up. You hear the difference? It's a lot more pressure to begin with, so you have to be very careful when that's coming out as well. That's a little trick for the day. Practice your pressure and practice pulling back. And the more you get comfortable with pulling this back and, and variating your pressure, is that a word or is that from my fictionary? Sorry guys, variation, variating. It'll regulate, I guess that's the word that I'm looking for. It'll regulate how much air is coming out. Just something to do. So we've already done this side. We're gonna flip this over. These are called helping hands. The link, I always have the links for everything that I use in the description below. There's a section for the gear that I use, the where to get the airbrush, where to get the helping hands. You can get these on Amazon. They come in very handy, especially when you're doing a lot of work at once. Um, these are alligator clips, and you can see that they are held by a pen. Um, you can get those replaced, and they're fairly inexpensive. As a matter of fact, I'll take two seconds and come over here and show you. You can get them in boxes of 100. Very inexpensive. And uh, if you do get overuse, you can just pull these off and put brand new ones on, and you're good to go. Helping hands makes a world of difference. All right, let's get started on this other side. We're going to use this long edge of the cross stencil. Turn my air pressure. Yep, I did. Turn it back down. And if you ever are spraying and then all of a sudden you get nothing coming out, because that does happen from time to time, immediately when it stops flowing out of your gun, pull it back off your bait and then get a little piece of paper, get some junk paper, and then just clear it. Push it out hard, raise your pressure, but don't get a big glob blasting out onto the bait because it's just more work you have to do cleaning it off. These can be cleaned off if you just use... Um, lukewarm or cool water. If you've already heat set the bottom layer of this, then that's probably the best way to do it. Um, so we're going to take this little and do the back of the eye here. You'll notice I'm just lining up with the existing lines that are here. And one thing I may do, I might purposely make, make a mistake and overshoot just to show you how you can correct a situation as well. Um, matter of fact, I think I will. So, let's say you make a little mistake. And you don't want that little piece of black there. Don't heat set it. I keep uh, Q-tips. I keep a bunch of them around. You don't even really need cleaner because you don't want to risk the, uh, the, take the chance of taking too much paint off. Just a glass of water, you can even use it dry and just gently pull your mistake off. And you'll see that comes right out. Super easy. 
matter of fact I think I might have overshot just a little bit and I did right here so again you can just lightly pull your excess paint off just like it never happened Molly what you talking about right, now that we're done with that you can do the same thing on the other side flip these baits over I'll get to these two in a minute but just for the purposes of the video we're going to show you how to do the other side and again you're gonna you can kind of see where it's come down you're always going to work away from you so that you're not smearing a smudge and paint and bring this little and it's probably it might even be easier to see on this side where you're just continuing the line that you started on the back. The back is always your starting point. It makes it so much easier to line up your stencil. There we go. And it's just a matter of getting comfortable with working with pressure. You can see now we have everything in a line. It looks like a starting to look like a crawfish. We'll do the same thing again here. Work away from you. Just nice and light. here get that eye okay and when you start feeling because you'll feel it your your stencil will get sticky and because this is cardboard it's not plastic um, or vinyl I don't bother rinsing this off because it'll just turn to mush so I kind of let it air dry and then I'll push the paint off on this paper towel and I found that, that works pretty nice pretty easily See, I'm, there we go. I just got to clear that back out. Lay the stencil back on, and there you go. Okay, we're going to do it to the other baits as well. Because just like the top, we're going to do all the bottoms together. But just to show you guys real quick, we now have a fairly recognizable and believable stencil of crawfish. All right, I'll roll my sleeves up just a little bit. Well, back to business. And you can see all I'm doing is moving a straight line from the tail, angling it towards the head a little bit. You can, I don't know if you can see that this is getting slick and wet, so we want to just dab that off. There we go. And there you have it. see I overshot right there just a little bit it's not a huge deal just take that q-tip and gently pull that black off it's like it never happened just flip this back around And again, it's just like I said, you're going to want to aim for the template, 
not that. Because if you aim for the bait, you're going to end up putting too much shadowing. I'm put that and do it just a little bit more there. Onto the bait. It's not going to look as believable. Let's see, we've overshot there again. I'm even going to let that go for a second just so I can finish this up. Understanding how to correct your mistakes is just as important as not making them at all. Just pull that off. Super simple. There you go. Wow. Yes, we did. Missed one little piece on the back. If you guys are paying attention, you're like, hey, you forgot that little piece on the back. I sure did. Let me get that back on there. There we go. I'm flip the baits over. And do the same thing on the other side. This time we're working away from us. That's just however however you feel comfortable working with this. If you guys have any questions or thoughts or you do stuff a little bit differently please leave that in the section below I hear you Molly shop dogs are tired this time of day Now, 90% of the things that I do is all hand cut by myself. Uh, I use an X-Acto knife with these, and, and you can see this is a, a VMC from uh, Jig Hooks. These work, they're a little bit thicker than the, um, the Mustad or, well, Bill Lewis Setlock Hooks. I'm pretty sure that Mustad makes them. But there's also a number of really awesome stencils that are pre-cut for you guys. Cedar Run does pre-cuts. Jonas Summers, um, he does pre-cuts from Lure Color Studio. And Russ Allen, Insane Custom Stencils, I believe the name of his. Russ, if I was wrong on that, <coughs> excuse me, need some water. Uh, if I was wrong on that, please correct me. But there's a uh, a lot of places that you guys can go to get really, really good stencils. One more there. Okay. Flip this around. And we're coming down the home stretch now, folks. This is the last one to do. And I pretty much am just turning this like a wheel. Um, just makes it easier in my hand to do. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think that Russ uh, puts his on a wheel, which makes a whole lot of sense. If you guys are on Facebook, which I think that probably it's maybe 60 or 70 percent of you guys that watch these videos are um, check out the Brotherhood of Custom Crankbait Painting. It is a learning page that was set up by Michael Orenstein, um, Garcia Rosa's over there, Gerald Novick. There's a lot of really really good long-term professional grade painters that that work on that page. Um, you can find me over there as well. I'm a moderator. Um, just a super place from beginner to pro they they go down step by step whether you're a hobbyist and you're just doing this for the first time uh, but check that page out on Facebook it is the brotherhood and sisterhood but brotherhood of custom crankbait painting 
great place to pick up some tips and uh, increase your knowledge on how to be a better airbrush painter and lure painter. And you can see now, since I've, I've had this paint in the chamber for a little bit, it is going to clog just a little bit eventually. So you want to just bring that over to your scrap paper and clear it as you're going. All right, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, we have them all four pretty much done except for the undersides. And the undersides, I'm going to do the same way I did the top. I'm going to line them all up in a row. And we'll hit the lines on the bottom. I've already got these set to go. So just easier for me anyways. And if you guys do it differently, please, by all means, leave a comment on how you set these things up. We'll go back to this other stencil here. Make sure you're working in a well-ventilated area. I'm saying that and I don't have my ventilation on today because it's kind of chilly outside, but I do have a, a huge air exchange. Um, that door hasn't worked in forever. So all I'm doing right there is just venting that out and it sucks air in. It also works as an air conditioner when it's hot in the summertime and it's not, it's spring. So I, I'm doing this on March 20, I think today's 25th. So that vents out the door and it sucks all the air in, so I'm not getting a lot of noxious fumes or chemicals. You don't want to breathe that. I do use a respirator, but not when I'm doing a video. So let's get back on point here. As a matter of fact, I think I'm actually going to use this piece again. I have some... I see you guys playing. Uh-huh. You can play. Back to the last two here. And you can see lining all this up makes it a whole lot easier, at least for me. You don't have to spray real heavy. And the last one. And there we go. All right, well, there you have it. In relatively short order, we've been able to do four lined up. Now, if you guys have different ways of doing them uh, or you have any questions or comments, please put them below the description in the, in the video feed. Uh, this is how I do it. If you guys have different methods or you want to share how you've been able to be successful at doing stenciling on a, on a crankbait, by all means, I welcome your comments. Smash that like button for me. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me today. Jen Cravasi from Jekyll Bates. Happy casting. There we go. That's about time for them to bark. You guys are going to have to deal with that because I'm at a point where I can't stop in this video to quiet them. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Sorry about that, you guys.